He who shall not be named was nowhere to be seen. And maybe for the first time in this election cycle, real issues were discussed, real debates were held, the front runner on hand lost his cool, and no one played it like a comedy act. Boys and girls, we now hopefully have a real fight on our hands for the Republican presidential nomination. And perhaps rising from the ashes is the candidate who has just had to fight and scrap for the chance to even be on the main stage. To the point, and in the face of his opponents, Senator Rand Paul is right here with his side of what happened on stage. Leaving us with the missing podium from Thursday night, Donald Trump raised the roof with his own event aimed at helping veterans. But there are vets who are questioning his motives, and the questions are going unanswered. This is where reality meets America. You may not always agree with the questions, but you will have a chance to make up your own mind. No lemmings allowed. I'm Ed Berliner, and this is The Hardline for Friday, January 29th, 2016. No, this, this format is not the best format for convincing anybody of anything. You know, we're dealing with sound bites as opposed to being able to explain something in depth. But unfortunately, you know, that's characteristic of the society that we live in today. We live in a sound bite society. Got that right. This was either the breath of fresh political air this nation and the Republican Party so desperately needed, or it was a prime example of the bumbling, stumbling sideshow the GOP has become without the ringmaster. This was a debate that made news for more reasons than any of the previous meetings. And as some predicted, may have shifted this race into the real Donnybrook we've all been hoping for. However, that line of reasoning could be nothing more than a huge mistake. Break out the political popcorn. Let's get in here. She is the popular and insightful writer for the Washington Post who does her fair share of spot on tweaking in her column, the right-hand blog, Jennifer Rubin. He is director of the William F. Buckley Jr. Fellowship Program at the National Review Institute and correspondent for the publication, Kevin Williamson. I want to thank you both for joining us. All right, let's take a big, deep breath and let's get going to it. And Jennifer, I'm going to start with you because right before I get to your column today, let's hear this from Ted Cruz. And this is what this caught me right at the beginning of the debate. He was trying to show off basically that he's the guy in charge. He was the big guy and he just looked a little over anxious. Here it was. Chris, I was mentioned yeah, in that question. No, you weren't. You, your name wasn't mentioned, Ted. I, I, I was, I, actually, I don't think your name was mentioned. I, I think the vote. No, sir. Chris, your, your sir, question said I think, you've I think, I think the was vote, question? question was about. It's not my question that you get a chance to respond to. <laughs> it's his answer. Chris, I would note that the last four questions have been. Rand, please attack Ted. Marco, please attack Ted. Chris, please attack Ted. Jeb, please attack Ted. Let me just say this. It is a debate, sir. Uh, well, no, no, a debate actually is a policy issue, but I will say this, gosh, if, if you guys say, ask one more mean question, I may have to leave the stage. <laughs> Jennifer, you pointed that out on your column today, and at that point, I turned to some people there and I said, he just lost this debate because for the first time, Ted Cruz cracked. Yeah, it was not a good evening for him. Just uh, to correct you for a moment, uh, it's the right turn blog at the Washington Post. Thank you. Um, but yes, it was not a good night, um, to put it mildly. And if you uh, are in Iowa and you picked up the Des Moines Register, um, it basically had a blaring headline um, that he took it hard. Um, I think in retrospect, um, although I think Trump may have hurt himself by not showing up, he hurt Cruz more. Um, he was frankly, front and center in um, some of the debate uh, and uh, didn't hold up very well. And he, without Trump there, he doesn't really have too much to say, too much to generate. So I think he did perform poorly. And the most negative aspects of his personality, this sort of cringing, not very funny, socially ill at ease part of uh, Ted Cruz really did come out. So, Kevin, then let's look at the other side of this. Some people believe that Marco Rubio took great advantage of this time. Of course, he and Cruz both got hammered by Rand Paul, and I think brilliantly on a lot of issues here. And some even say Chris Christie made some great points pulling out from the pack. What do you think? Well, they all had pretty good nights, I think. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Ted Cruz fan, and I hope Ted Cruz gets back into the race because this jackass that he plays on television just is an unrecognizable character. Uh, you know, Cruz has clearly decided that the Republican electorate is uh, made up of, of dumb people. And he is really campaigning as a sort of Yahoo uh, kind of character. And it's just not him. You know, he's just he's not that guy. He's not a, uh, you know, talk radio ranter. He's a, you know, he's a Princeton and Harvard guy. He's a, he's a smart guy. And uh, his attempt to sort of, you know, be in that Trump lane, I think, is, is a mistake for him. 
Uh, you know, Rubio is really good in these sorts of formats because Rubio just has that great politician ability to just, uh, you know, kind of flip a switch and do that, you know, American dream thing he does, which is very uh, inspiring. And if it's sincere, it's even better. But if it's not, he's awfully good at it. Uh, you know, I'm a libertarian leaning guy, so I'm uh, I'm naturally pretty well inclined to uh, Rand Paul. I'm glad to see him back in it. I always think it's a very hard sell. Uh, you know, I wrote a piece for Politico maybe a year and a half ago about Rand Paul and just the difficulty of trying to make a principled libertarian case to the American electorate, which doesn't like it. But don't you think he's too uh, little too late right now, though? I mean, and Rand Paul is going to join us here in the show in a little bit, but it really seems like he made great points, but there's no way that he can make up his deficit right now. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's electioneering stuff. That's not really my area of, of specialization. But, I mean, Rand's basic problem is his, his principles and his belief, which he is... Um, he has a great deal of integrity in sticking to, and it's just not that popular. Uh, Americans don't really want to cut government spending all that much. Americans say they like things like balanced budgets, but if you go out there and do the things you have to do to balance the budget, they don't like that very much. Uh, so they're much more in tune with this sort of, you know, uh, Trumpian, uh, light national socialist populism than they are with Rand Paul's more principled libertarianism. It's just a very hard sell, I think. Uh, I don't think there's probably been a uh, libertarian-leaning candidate uh, or national figure in, in many, many years who's as good at this as Rand Paul is, who's as attractive a candidate, and even you know, with him Indeed. being the best of the pack, uh, still not rising all that high, I think it's just a hard sell. Let me turn to Rubio here, Jennifer, because you brought that in as well, that he had a very strong first half of the debate, but let's get honest here. He got hammered pretty good by Rand Paul on the immigration issue, and it seems like unless he gets that, that albatross around from his neck and figures out how he's going to explain everything and do it to the satisfaction of all the voters, he may not be able to make up a lot of ground. On the other side, though, there are people saying that no, I, he's I the guy who was all Paul. set for New Hampshire, uh, though. No, I don't think that's right. Um, I think Rand Paul, um, in essence, rode to Rubio's rescue by telling uh, Cruz to his face, you have an authenticity problem, um, which he does. So I think in that respect, Rubio uh, caught a break. Listen, Rubio has that problem with a certain segment of the Republican base. He got out of that about as well as he is going to do on that issue. When he gets to the general election, that if he is the nominee, he'll have something to talk about and uh, try to expand the GOP base. Um, but I think he did have one of the better uh, debates. Um, I think he slowed down or wasn't as central to the conversation the second half. But if you think that people um, sort of lose attention span, uh, he probably got in his uh, best performance moments early on. Um, I just want to go back to something that Kevin said on um, Rand Paul. I actually think he hasn't been consistent, and this is why he's done so much worse than his father. Libertarians are very upset with him because he hasn't been libertarian enough, uh, that is, neo-isolationist enough on foreign policy. He also has been all over the map himself on immigration. Listen, most uh, libertarians are very pro-immigration. It's a free market principle, um, and they don't engage in all of this uh, hyperventilation. And there, you know, uh, Rand Paul has been a big disappointment. He voted against the bill. He sort of invokes this amnesty language. So I think he has done, you know, about a quarter as well as his father, not simply because we live in a different uh foreign policy atmosphere, but because I think he thought he could moderate towards the conservative wing of the party a little bit more, keep his father's uh, supporters, and then expand. And it really hasn't worked out that way at all. Okay, I've got about 90 seconds left, so I have a different question for both of you. First of all, to you, Kevin, let's stay on here, the ones that we did see last night at the debate. Chris Christie, he made some very good, strong points, seems to be not a winner in many people's minds, but at least being able to stick in there and be part of this when we get to New Hampshire. Do you think that he is still a force to be reckoned with? Oh, sure, I think so. You know, Christie's one of those guys, I look at his actual record in office and it doesn't impress me all that much. I mean, part of it's that he was a governor of New Jersey, or is the governor of New Jersey, rather, so it's it's not an easy thing. But, you know, he's pretty weak on some issues that are important to me, things like the Second Amendment. But, you know, Chris Christie goes out and talks and does his Chris Christie thing, and, you know, in spite of yourself, you, you like the guy. Um, there really is a certain kind of, uh, a certain kind of charisma to uh, Chris Christie, and I think he's going to be a force, I think, still in the race for people who maybe are a little bit from more of the moderate ring of the party, but don't want to be... Uh, looking at another uh, candidate named Bush. All right, Jennifer, 30 seconds to you, then he who shall not be named who was there on, uh, not there, I should say, on Thursday night. 
Did he make a mistake? Did he not make a mistake? Does he even care at this point if he made a mistake? I don't think he cares, um, and uh, I've given up predicting what the uh, antics of uh, Donald Trump are going to mean in terms of electoral support. Um, I think he was ahead going into last night by not showing up. He certainly didn't uh, help himself, but he didn't hurt himself. And it's probably a net plus to him if his closest competitor in Iowa, Ted Cruz, by almost unanimous consent, had a rotten night. So maybe he was on to something after all. And here we go. New Hampshire's right there. Uh, don't forget the right turn blog at Washington Post. I want to make sure I get that right this time and make sure. You did. Kevin thank from you. the National Review. I thank you both for joining us. We'll talk to you again both soon. Now, more important than who won the debate, who was the adult in the room? Senator Rand Paul believes he was, and he also believes that he has now got some momentum heading for the caucus on Monday and New Hampshire. He will join us one-on-one -on -one, coming up next right here on The Hardline.